Hey plant peeps, what's up? Welcome back to another video from Here But Not. Uh, it's been a couple months since I posted about those seedling uh, Phalaenopsis palins and I wanted to do a quick update and show you how they're doing as well as kind of walk you through the rest of the, the flasks that I have on the go because some of them are getting pretty big right now which is awesome. Um, so let me round those up and let's do some show and tell. These are all the flasks and the ones on the left are the Phalaenopsis palins. And you can see that there's a lot of protocorms in there. They're much bigger than they, than the seeds when we sowed them. Um, <clears throat> the one thing that I'm a little bit not too sure about is there's quite a few of the protocorms that are uh, browning and dying. So <clears throat> that could be a function of the media. It could be a function of the fact that they're it's a selfing, and so maybe the vitality uh, of a selfing isn't as good. I, I don't know. I haven't haven't really had this problem yet. It could also be that I was like messing around with the media and added too much sugar. Uh, maybe Palin specifically doesn't like um, <clears throat> doesn't like media that's that's got more sugar or more nutrients. I don't know. So considering I wasn't sure that these were like gonna be viable because they the seed pot had opened so early. Um, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. My only concern at this point is that maybe those seedlings aren't going to make it to full size. Um, we'll see how it goes, but but for now, I think that like let's carry on with the rest of them. So this is the group that's Phalaenopsis tying shin fly eagle by Lovely Mary. Uh, you can see that they're kind of all in different states. Uh, last time I had the a bunch of those ones on the right, and I've actually deflasked or, or replated a few of those into into larger flasks. The one in the middle at the front with the largest seedlings, I re replated the longest time ago. Um, so it, it like really shows the value of, of, of why replating is important because you distribute the media, plus you can thin them out a little bit um, and, and give them some room to grow. And I also think that plants create, um, well, Phalaenopsis create volatile compounds. So if you don't replate them, then you experience like a slowdown in the growth plus the, the nutrients is being used up. So the bigger ones are, are like coming along well. These ones I replated most recently and they don't look super great. Um, I had to tear some of them apart and I'm kind of experiencing this thing where the, uh, where the protocorms are proliferating or like multiplying, which means any of, of the protocorms from a mass will be a clone of the same one, which you don't really want because it means if you like flower a crappy plant, then you've got a bunch of crappy clones. So um, we'll see how that goes, but but these are, I think they're probably getting close to deflasking size. Maybe I'll give them another two or three months, maybe longer. Um, I know the bigger one I could deflask now, some of the smaller ones that are inside here, for example, I probably wanna let grow up. And then these ones need to be, um, need to be replated. Uh, the one in the back here, I had also done recently and they're fairly large in there. So they're, they're coming along well, much bigger than they were, which is awesome. Uh, we'll carry on to the next Phalaenopsis. This one is Tying Shin Fly Eagle by Belina Alba. Uh, there's a lot of like small seedlings in here. I, I think that these are suffering, not suffering, but like having the same problems as the other ones, which is they need to be replated. And because I haven't replated them, um, they're not really, they're not really like growing in size so much at this point. I think there's, you see that there's like a whole bunch of like masses of them in there. So uh, that's gonna be a task for me to do pretty soon. And last are the uh, Phragmopediums. They're, they're doing like really well, picking up a lot of speed. Uh, I did lose a couple more flasks to contamination. I've decided that anything, like I'm no longer using those square flasks. Uh, every single Every single flask that I've had of those square ones has ended up in contamination. And with the exception of one threaded cap on, on like this style of jar, I've only had one contamination out of like all of these, whereas the square, square flasks were literally all of them. So I'm not super impressed with that. Um, I think I paid a lot for them. It was like a buck or two per one of those flasks. So um, I think you can probably use them if you have a, a stabilized environment, but 
I'm in Canada on hot days, our apartment goes up to 30 degrees Celsius on cool days. It goes down to like 16 degrees Celsius. And I think that creates an, a pressure differential inside the flask. And then that creates a, a pull or suck of air. And then it introduces um, contaminations because it's typically always been on a cooler day that I found that the, um, that the contaminations happen. Anyways, um, checking these out. These are the, um, or Phragmopedium Honey Papau by Sam Crothers. These are doing really well. They're one quarter uh, Kavakii. And I'm super excited for these because cons they, they have a lot of vigor, really. That's about the only reason why. Both of these flasks have done really well. Um, I can't get it to focus very well inside there. There we go. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited for those. Uh, this is a selfing of... Uh, Pink Panther, which is uh, Phragmopedium shalimnii by or shalimnii by Fishery, and the, and and the reason that I wanted to try this is because in theory, when you self a hybrid, you kind of blow the genetics out at either end. You kind of take recessive traits from either of the parents and then back cross them and and accentuate whatever those are, in theory. So I want to see in a primary hybrid what that looks like. And then uh, second last one is the Hane Papau by Pink Panther. These are growing like weeds. I, I could probably deflask them right now. Um, I was asking some of the guys on the forums or the groups and they said to replate for better success, which is killing me because I just want to deflask them. But I will replate them and if I get a contamination, then I'll deflask them. And then the last one is uh, Memoria Dick Clemens by Sam Crothers. So this is again one quarter uh, Kovakii, and then Memoria de Clemens is like a super red flower. So I'm expecting if I can get these to flower, they'll be like uh, fairly large and, and deep crimson red flowers in theory. Um, they're still quite young, so we'll see how it goes. But that's, that's pretty much the update on the seedlings. They are alive. Um, the ones that we all flask together are doing okay. There's protocorms in there. Um, I may replate those, but what I'll, I'll save the replate for a video and just we can do that together. So that's pretty much it for the flasks. I kind of want to do a quick uh, update on the rest of my plants. I don't want to take a lot of time for it, but I'm going to walk you through uh, and just do like a video over top of, of some of the plants that I have on the go right now that I've talked about in the past and maybe some of the ones that I haven't. Um, and, and it'll just be like a general update. So these are the plants that kind of go on the floor. The seedlings all sit here. It looks like a mess because, uh, and I also, I missed a few other flasks, but they're honestly so small that I, uh, until they're bigger, there's not a lot of point in talking about them. Uh, at any rate, this is typically where I put the seedlings. On the bottom right is the uh, mexipediums. Top left is this weird, uh, man, it's a Cattleya or Lilia by Epidendrum, I think, Cockyeye or something. Very super weird hybrid. I ordered it from Ecoregenera and they seem to be doing pretty well already. They're starting to have like um, secondary growths growing and stuff and they've got some nice blushing. So it'll be interesting to see what those look like if they ever bloom, but we'll see. Um, so the down, down lower level is, is doing pretty well. Uh, these are all of my paths and they have put on like a fair bit of size. Some of them, I, I, honestly, I would have expected would have put on size a little faster than they have, but that's the joy of Pathia Petalum, I suppose. Uh, this is a new one that's in, in flower right now. I bought this like last year and this one is, was the one that I noted as being the best. So this is Hier Hieroglyphica by uh, Javonica. And it, it kind of smells like cherry certs, which you can't buy anymore. But, but when I was a kid, I remember that having like this weird kind of sweet cherry flavor. And, and the smell of them like reminds me of that. Super big flowers, or sorry, big plants. They have, um, I think 12 leaves each and I have two of those. So pretty great. Uh, some of the seedlings from the, the batch that I deflasked last year, they're all getting pretty big and like doing well. Uh, this is my soursop plant. It has gotten huge this year. Like it's probably two and a half feet tall now. Uh, and then inside here is the miracle berry that I started from seed. There's two, two plants in here. 
but they've taken off in size too. Like still pretty small considering I germinated both of them at the exact same time and the sour sop is easily twice as tall as this uh, miracle berry. But the miracle berries, man, I am so excited for those to actually fruit because they're the coolest plant in the world and, and I really wanna like, I've been talking about them with my friends and, and how it like ch t changes your taste buds and I'm like, you, you guys have to try this. So very excited about this, glad I haven't killed it. Hooray for pH adjustment. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna take you to the bedroom and show you some of the other plants that are in there. Really like everything else is, is doing well, they're big. And of course the cat is just super impressed with whatever I'm doing, hey Clyde. So the bedroom plants, I, I haven't technically finished watering, which is why the big Phalaenopsis is on the floor. I need to water that and then put it back on the shelf. Um, but you can see that they, everything's just getting huge, right? Like like this Phalaenopsis is now uh, absolutely gigantic. The Phragmopediums are getting a lot bigger as well. Um, the uh, Makotis Patola, they're starting to mound up. There's lots of those. Uh, the Phalaenopsis, Mary, there we go, come on is doing really well. I have tons of blooms on the first time that that's actually blooming, so I'm super happy about that. Um, and, and the rest is kind of kind of starting to look a little junky because there's so many plants in here. Um, <clears throat> these are the other Phragmopediums that I have. Uh, these are still in bloom from, there we go, still in bloom from the summer. Uh, it's a natural hybrid, Longifolium by Heritzii. It's got like six new growths coming on this plant. So everything is getting very bushy compared to what it was. I'm not complaining, but I definitely am running into a situation where I probably need to stop buying new plants. Um, I have a new leaf on my uh, Philodendron melanocrystum. It's doing well. There's a new leaf starting on the uh, it was supposed to be Anthurium clarinervium, but I actually think is Crystallinum, given that the uh, clarinervianum, I don't know why I can't say that word. Anyways, the, it, normally it's supposed to have a like, big heart shape like upper area, and, and this is definitely more um, like uh, Crystallinum with the larger lower area over the top. The Anthurium forgetii had a new leaf. It is the new leaf is gigantic like it's so big um so really happy about that it even has a flower there you can see it um you can also check out the phalaenopsis shilleriana is massive i think it has 10 leaves on there so so the plants are doing really well right like things are going well uh i'm starting to learn what happens when you have a collection that now exceeds or, or like lives and you stop killing things and then you have to deal with like what happens with plants that technically when you acquire them are small and then they're going to be adult size so it's uh I'm, I'm probably gonna have to start selling things or at least dealing with some of those things this is not a solicitation to say like come by myself um i am currently dealing with red mites and thrips and it's summer and spider mites are just like ballooning right now so i'm like soaping the crap out of all my plants so I'm, i can't sell anything because i just would feel really bad if i if i sold some of this uh the last thing i should probably give an update on and this is devastating the terrarium is like cooked um uh, my fan not fan the pump that i had running on there uh went like it died and basically everything dried within within like a week so I'm sad about that. It, it's like this death reminder in the corner. It's also specifically why I don't like terrariums. You create this enclosed system where, where if anything goes out of whack, if the humidity drops, if, if the power goes out, if the lights burn out, then you're screwed. Um, and maybe had I been more on top of it, I could have corrected the pump, but the back, back wall was starting to collapse as well. And so it was just like a bunch of things that happened at the same time and I was just like, screw this, and I gave up on it. So I'm embarrassed about this, but part of being a YouTuber is to show my successes as well as my failures. So boo-hoo. 
So that's pretty much everything. A really quick update and recap on how things are going as well as the seedlings. I'm, I'm mostly like excited and thrilled about the seedlings. Uh, I also recognize that the space issue that I just talked about is going to become more of a problem because the seedlings are going to take up more space. So that's a problem for tomorrow me to deal with. Today me is, in, is basking in the success of the seedlings and crying about the terrarium. Anyways, uh, I hope things are well with you. I do, I, my next video I really want to create uh, Fragmapedium care. It's something that I feel like I do pretty well with. The frags are doing very well as you've seen. So that is on my list of things to talk about. If you have frags or if you have questions, put them down below and let me know what you'd like me to answer. And I'll make sure that I include those in the, in the, in the video. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, hope things are well. Talk to you soon. Ciao. Who's the kitty? You're the kitty.